embarkation procedure will be in accordance with the schedule posted on the bulletin board. All passengers who have not attended the orientation lecture on Japan will report topside immediately for final briefing. I'll begin the final orientation lecture on Japan by repeating what you just heard. We're almost there. I think it's vitally important from the outset to understand why you are being sent to Japan at this time. Take a look at this map of Japan and note its position in reference to the communist-dominated countries. Japan is the one place in all Asia where American strength comes within sight and sound of the Russian Iron Curtain. The Chinese wealth of natural resources and Japanese know-how, Russia would like to join them together. If the Soviets ever command the giant industrial power of Japan, it would be a short step to communist control of all Asia. That's why in Japan we're working with the Japanese in building a defense force that will ultimately discourage any aggression. Units of the Japanese defense forces are now in training throughout the country. They're an impressive army of fighting men, well trained and equipped with the latest in military equipment. Much of this equipment was supplied by the United States, but quite a bit of it, from ball bearings to heavy tanks, was turned out in Japanese factories. Japanese air missions tie in closely with America's Far Eastern Air Force to give this area of the world sufficient air power in case of trouble. Well, that's a very brief picture of the responsibilities. There's also the reward which are many in a country like Japan. Just ahead is a different world, a new experience unlike anything you have ever known. I'm sure you've all been wondering what it's going to be like, the people, customs, food, and the climate. Some of you perhaps are a little uneasy. You may have the idea that Japan is still like this, a carryover from the days of World War II. A hostile country where a man has to keep his wits above it. Or maybe you have the idea that Japan is an oriental paradise, utopia, land of milk and honey. Like all preconceived ideas, there may be a little bit of truth, but mostly way off base. The best approach is keep an open mind. To help you get a true picture before you set foot on Japanese soil, let's take an imaginary tour. Forget those other impressions of Japan and picture in your mind a tremendous port, Yokohama, gateway to sea traffic to the Western world from all Asia. Here, just outside the port area, we begin our trip. But wait, as long as we're imagining all this, let's do it upright. Just hop in that new convertible and we'll get started. Driving south from Yokohama on the left side here, the road winds gracefully along the shore. It's country that has been compared for beauty with the Riviera or the Florida or Southern California coasts. Impressions are particularly vivid on this first visit. Numerous little villages along the coast, crowded shops, houses, and always countless numbers of people. Main Street in the town of Odawara, island of Honshu, legendary country of Japan. You're a long way from home. Well, maybe not so far after all. You'll find the Japanese have a knack of doing things directly opposite. We read and write across the page from left to right. The Japanese system is from top to bottom and then to the left. In beckoning to the little girl, instead of holding his palm up as we do, he holds the palm down. In Japan, love comes after marriage, not before. It is the wife who is expected to help her husband into his coat. These differences come from customs and manners developed over many centuries, so the opposite way is often the best way for the Japanese. Patience and understanding can make this tour in Japan very enjoyable and worthwhile. Maybe you're from farm country in the USA 
And watching the labor of these farmers, you understand a problem the Japanese have had for centuries. Too many people, not enough land, and therefore not enough food. Back home in the States, the average farm is about 155 acres. Here, it's a pitifully small two and a half acres. As a result, Japanese farmers must spend incredibly long hours of unmechanized, back-breaking work to make their farms produce enough for their needs. The sight of the Japanese farmer bending, stooping, and tearing at the soil with primitive tools stays with you wherever you go in Japan. Near the town of Kamakura, you stop at one of the most unforgettable sites of your trip. The statue of the great Buddha, over 700 years old. A wonderful subject for photographs, but it's much more than that. The great Buddha of Kamakura symbolizes a culture a thousand years old before Columbus discovered America. The presence of the statue illustrates, in a way, a system which makes it possible for 87 million people to live together in the most crowded conditions. And, of course, it symbolizes religion, which is so much a part of everyday living in this country. Actually, the traditional religion of most Japanese is Shintoism. Shinto centers around the worship of nature, ancestors, and heroes. This religion is based on a strong feeling for beautiful creations of nature, and places where people experience these feelings become shrines. There are thousands of these Shinto shrines in Japan. You drive through Kamakura, and you stop at a Japanese fishing village. You see the Japanese working as hard at sea as they do on land in a desperate effort to ease Japan's food shortage. What the land cannot give, they must take from the sea. Sea products are a basic part of the diet of the Japanese people. As you notice when you eat a Japanese meal, a dish called sushi is a favorite here, boiled rice with slices of raw fish. Not really bad at all, just a matter of getting used to it. In addition to the regular commissary facilities, there are all sorts of restaurants in Japan. But Japanese food has something to offer to those looking for something different. The style of cooking is simple, and the basic food is rice, eaten three times daily, just as we eat bread. Kiyaki, a combination of beef and vegetables, is the dish that appeals most to foreigners. But regardless of what you eat, one problem must be faced, winning the battle of the chopsticks. As the saying goes, it's just a matter of getting the hang of them. But let's face it, sometimes they just don't hang right. Fortunately, there's usually someone around to help out. After dinner, the owner of the hotel proudly takes you on a tour of his garden. Japanese believe the good life involves a proper appreciation of the beautiful. The care of their gardens reflects this belief. Of course, you've settled the price in advance with the hotel owner. It's a fair price. The Japanese won't choke you if you keep away from flip joints. You pay the bill plus a fair tip without showing your bankroll. Not that you're afraid he'll grab it. It's just that you won't make friends by showing off your greenbacks. Generally, the Japanese don't have much money, but they're proud and sensitive. It's best to keep the amount of money you're carrying your own affair. When you leave, everyone comes out to wish you well. A warm sayonara. Goodbye. Traveling up from the coastal area into the lake country of the Hakone Mountains, you stop for a look at 10 province paths. In a magnificent sweeping view, one can see 10 Japanese provinces and dominating the entire view, world famous Mount Fuji. That afternoon, you go rowing on Lake Yamaguchi, from which you get another view of the mighty snow-capped mountain. Soon after, you're in Kyoto, ancient capital city of Japan. Kyoto is still the cultural center of Japan, containing a wealth of fine ancient art treasures. 
Everything in Kyoto emphasizes the old and traditional, such as the ancient ceremonial dances performed by the famous dancers of this city. A day later, you find that Japan has more than beautiful scenery and quaint customs. From a sleepy little agricultural village, Osaka became one of the big industrial centers in Japan. In a tremendous effort, the Japanese government converted a totally mechanically unskilled population into a nation of great industrial capacity. They are far ahead of the rest of Asia and rank with the leading industrial powers of the world. This becomes a lot more significant when you realize that Japan is the only non-communist country in Asia that can build a diesel engine. It's no wonder the communists are willing to risk a great deal to gain control of this industrial power. Communists are in a minority in Japan, but communist agents work night and day here to gain their objectives. They are specialists in creating incidents. They build it up for fiery anti-American hate campaigns. Agitators like these are looking for opportunities that will involve Americans. The very presence of Americans near these meetings causes an explosive reaction. Look, Americans interfering in Japanese politics. Why don't they go home and mind their own business? The only protection from this kind of talk is by avoiding political demonstrations. Most Japanese will respect you for doing so while you're a guest in their country. You continue your trip as far south as Hiroshima, scene of the devastating atomic explosion during the last days of World War II. Most of the city was leveled to the ground. Proof of the power of the bomb is everywhere, mute but emphatic. There is another kind of evidence, too, years after the mushroom cloud has faded away. Evidence in the form of new buildings, schools, and roads and a new spirit which says clearly, we shall not go the way of the past. From these ruins, we shall rebuild our nation on the principles of the other nations of the free world. From Hiroshima, you start on the way back north toward Tokyo. As you roll past mile after mile of Japanese countryside, you can't help but be impressed by the energy of the people who rebuilt this country after the horrible destruction. You can see it everywhere in the fast diesel trains that speed by, and in the up-to-date office building. But along with the modern, you see evidence that the old traditional customs will always be very important here. You see a contest of jabusane, archery on horseback. And you take time to watch a match between two sumo wrestlers. Once, your car is held up by a group celebrating a festival. It could be one of many, Dolls Festival, Star Festival, or a dozen others. The Japanese year is full of celebrations. On festival nights, it looks and sounds like the 4th of July and Mardi Gras all rolled into one. One thing becomes apparent very shortly after you arrive in Japan. In a way, everything the Japanese do is part of a strict ritual. Here, a woman performs the centuries-old tea ceremony, an elaborate ritual developed through the ages. You probably won't understand it at first, just as many of our customs would be equally as puzzling to them. Early the next afternoon, you approach the climax of your trip, Tokyo, one of the great cities of the world, capital of Japan, and home for five and a half million people. A strange mixture, ancient philosophies trying to adjust to the modern, like this situation. 
I am a production manager in a factory where toys of all types are made. It is an important position. My salary is 10,000 yen, which is about $30 a week. Not very much, is it, for living in a country suffering with high inflation. Yet most Japanese workers can never hope to make half as much. Our homes are shabby. We cannot afford electrical appliances, washing machines, refrigerators. These luxuries will be out of reach for us for a long time to come. Please don't keep telling us your way of doing things is better. We cannot afford your way. Let us learn what you have to teach us, bit by bit, in our own way. Tokyo is also home of the emperor, who still lives on the palace grounds, but no longer revered by his people as a god. On a height near the imperial palace are the real rulers of Japan, the Diet, Japan's Senate and House of Representatives. On Tokyo's most famous street, you can go shopping outside of the PX for souvenirs. There are all sorts of wonderful buys, not only in the large department stores, but in the stalls that line the sidewalks. In front of one, you watch an old bargainer at work. Somebody has 1,300 yen, sir. Yeah, all right, well, I, I buy it for 600 yen. That's all set. Yeah, I give you, how many do you want? All right. Buy. Just one, 600 yen. Yeah, I give you a bell price, 900 yen. 900? Yes, sir. What do you think I am? 600 yen, that's, uh, that's it. Nothing, I don't make money. Oh, you make hot time money. No chump chump, what you gonna do? Oh, God. <laughs> you probably own a chain of restaurants on the yeah, side. All right, all right. 600 yen. You say 600, right? I say 900. Five hundred today for 750, right? 750? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. I hope that's you so come up to you come up 150, I come down 150, oh, right? That's your psychology, huh? All right, I go up 50, 600, 650 yen. Yeah, okay, last price, more 50 yen, give me. 700, right. Like. 700 yen? Right. Like. Well, okay. Well, we're getting pretty close there. Um, <laughs> all right, well, we'll, we'll take that along for 700 yen. Then. Okay. At night, the Ginza comes alive with brilliant neon. There are shows to be seen, Japanese style, or a routine more familiar to Americans. Well, there's the picture. You may forget some of the details, but the important thing to remember is patience and understanding. Now hear this, all personnel will prepare to disembark.